Welcome back everyone to Gotcha Interact. Today we're going to be talking about Mawika, doing a little bit of a, you know, analysis of looking at her first kit, what we've kind of got so far. Kit actually came out pretty recently, Rift, so let's go ahead and talk about it, looking at everything she's got to offer. First going into it, she's obviously going to follow more of a pyro main DPS type kind of idea as a character. She will be ascending into crit damage, and we'll talk about her weapon probably in a later video or anything like that, but mainly that weapon's going to be going into crit rate, so it balances out a good crit ratio. Also, the four piece that she'll probably use will also balance that crit ratio out even further. Looking forward into her skills though, Rift, what can you tell us about her normal attack talent and her skill? Well, the normal attack, looking just at this, is not anything special, just as your typical normal attack. It is a four uh, normal attack chain, has a normal charge attack, plunging attack, but getting into the skill and the burst, looking at the skill first, uh, just reading this off, it states that it'll call upon her authority over conflict and she'll summon the all-fire armaments passed down through the line of human archons, dealing Night Soul aligned pyro damage. And after using it, Mavwika's Night Soul points are restored to maximum value and she enters her Night Soul's Blessing state. This skill also does have a tap and a hold version, so looking at the tap version of this, Divine Name Unleashed, the all-fire armaments manifest as rings of searing radiance. The rings follow the current active character and attack nearby opponents at intervals, dealing Night Soul aligned pyro damage. And then looking quickly at the hold version, the armaments again will manifest as a flame strider. And in this state, Mavwika can ride the flame strider at high speed. This is talking about that motorcycle that you probably, if you already have seen some gameplay, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or she either gets on this motorcycle or she can activate its hidden backup propulsion module to temporarily cross various terrain types and glide in midair temporarily. Mavuika's normal charged and plunging attacks will also be converted to deal Night Soul aligned pyro damage, which cannot be overridden. So seeing the pyro infusion here is very good. Also when sprinting, she also deals Night Soul aligned pyro damage to opponents along her path. While in the Night Soul's Blessing state, tapping the elemental skill can switch the all-fire armaments form. The armaments will disappear once Mavwika's Night Soul's Blessing state ends. And looking specifically at the Night Soul Blessing state, it's going to continuously consume the Night Soul points according to the all-fire armaments form, based on either the tap or the hold version. Mavwika's Night Soul's Blessing state ends once the Night Soul points are exhausted. And so that's kind of basically her skill, but Vixen, maybe what do you have a little bit uh, as far as insight goes for the skill, do you have a little bit more to expound on? Well, overlooking everything that, because I mean, this character I've been waiting for for a very long time and Riff knows that I haven't shut up today about it. So oh, yeah, uh, this is kind of my way to get everything <laughs> I want to talk about out. And looking at her as a character, I'm extremely excited. She's exactly what I was looking forward to be. But with the skill specifically, uh, it, once again, she's going to be riding her motorcycle the entire time, basically. Uh, the tap version is supposed to be kind of the kind of idea of like off field application. Sadly, at least for this character, we will make a future character a video in the future in the next few days about a new character that will actually probably be a in this role differently. But Mawika will most likely not be a Shangling replacement for application for Pyro, just because this application doesn't seem like it's happening very often. Now, when we look at when she's riding the motorcycle, that's when you're kind of kind of use her as a DPS kind of idea. And when she does that, she actually holds her sword out while she's on the motorcycle. So it looks really, really cool. Also, uh, it's also kind of like interesting thing I've seen is that she has like tread marks on the ground. So when you dash or when you sprint, you're like gonna start like doing stuff like that, uh, as well as charge attacks. You're just gonna start like going in a circle and put like tread marks on the ground, stuff like that. So. I'm extremely excited to see what we can see here, but there's a lot of good stuff that comes out of the skill, I think, overall. Once again, continuously consuming those Night Soul points, she starts at a maximum and slowly decreases. Very, very good for the four piece set that she's probably going to run with Obsidian Codex. Once again, making up for a lot of the crit rate she might have uh, losing in that lower crit rate weapon. Chaska is upon us, but with the Pyro Archon looming on the horizon, we are all making sure we have enough Prima Gems to pull her. Want to give yourself the best shot at bringing Chaska home without overspending? That's where Loot Bar comes in. With Loot Bar, you can top up your account at a discount so you can pick up Chaska and still afford Mavwika. Loot Bar keeps things simple and secure. The only thing they need is your UID and server. No passwords or emails are needed. And for those late night, last minute pulls, Loot Bar offers 24-7 live chat support. It's the backup you need, especially when luck feels like, well, it's not on your side. If you're still on the fence, just check out over 13,000 player reviews praising Loot Bar. Plus, your currency will hit your account in just 30 minutes or less. Other creators use Loot Bar too. 
Click the link in the description or pinned comment and make the smart choice with Loot Bar. Now, back to the video. Let's go ahead and talk about the burst now. Looking at the burst, it is called Hour of Burning Skies. Uh, there's basically a point in time that I should let you know with this burst is it's not based off of elemental energy, so you're not going to have a little gauge. The entire idea is actually based off of fighting spirit. So with Maiwika's elemental burst, it's not going to rely on that elemental energy. When Maiwika has at least 50% fighting spirit, she can consume it all to unleash her elemental burst. She can gain fighting spirit in the following methods. When in combat, night soul points consumed by nearby party members are converted to fighting spirit. So if other characters in the party are using up night soul points, they will be converted into fighting spirit for her instead. And when nearby party members use normal attacks and they hit opponents, that will also turn those attacks, every normal attack will turn into 1.5 fighting spirit. And that can trigger every 0.1 second. Very, very nice. This is probably more or less when you would use her on that like other side of things if she's like an off-field character. So maybe like an Ayato team or something like that rift that you might be trying to already. I already see the gears turn in a little bit, maybe idea. I don't know. <laughs> but I think that allows her to play with non-Natland characters. After using this, Mawika gains 10 Night Soul points and enters the Night Soul Blessing state, riding her Flame Strider or her motorcycle high in the air and uses a powerful Sunfell Slice against her opponents on the ground. So this is when she actually uses the burst. This is what will happen. She'll gain those Night Soul points and enter her blessing state while be doing a huge Night Soul aligned AoE pyro damage hit and entering the Crucible of Death and Life state. The Crucible of Death and Life state states that during this time, Maiwika's various actions will no longer consume Night Soul points and her interruption to resistance is increased. Also, the damage dealt by the Sunfell Slice and the Flame Strider forms normal and charge attacks that she does will also be increased based on the amount of fighting spirit she has when she uses the elemental burst. This state uh, will be canceled when Maiwika leaves the field as well. So looking at this real quick, it looks like it's a little bit of a combination between if you played Star Rail something, the fighting spirit is more along the ideas of like someone like Acheron where she kind of gets those stacks based on the other characters. That's kind of what you're focusing on here. But the Crucible of Death and Life state, actually, it kind of reminds me of more like a Raiden thing, where as soon as she gets in, she's got this really big way to go for a lot of damage. Uh, but when she leaves the field, she'll lose it as well. So make sure that you're not jumping her on and off field when you use this. Yeah, one of the main things I really like just looking at all of this, uh, like you've already con gone through it, but one thing I really liked is that she reactivates her Night Soul Blessing state by using the burst. So you can kind of... Uh, mitigate that with the skill because uh, let's say you use the skill to go into Night Soul's Blessing State that has a cooldown of like 15 seconds so there could be some downtime you could use the burst to reactivate it and keep going and then you have the skill back again so she might actually have 100% uptime with her own Night Soul's Blessing State which shouldn't be an issue even before then just because you would go through normal rotation with other characters anyways but looking at all this it looks really good she kind of seems like a selfish character obviously you know damage dealer another thing to kind of point out is when I was looking at the skill I'm noticing all the damage multipliers for the normal attack hits and the charge attack hits are coming from the skill itself so this means most likely now this is hard to say because it is only version one of the beta and all of this stuff so this could change but at first glance this looks like you won't have to touch the normal attack talent at all because it's all tied to the skill increasing the skill is going to increase all of her on field attack damage normal attacks charge attacks stuff like that so i feel like that one's going to be the highest priority with the burst literally right behind it just because the burst is a nice initial hit but her actual on field damage is coming from the skill Definitely. And also looking at the burst, it'd also be good to level into that because you're going to get a normal attack and charge attack damage bonus, as well as that initial big damage hit uh, based on the fighting spirit that you use up. So it's kind of like right in with it's good to get a bigger damage hit, but also the higher resolve or, or the amount of stacks you get or, or the higher number of attack you get per stack you get. Very similar that we see something here. So I'm very, very excited. I think that was a good thing to bring up for right. sure. Well, looking a little bit further, Rift, if you could go over and talk about the passives. You've got some uh, three pretty good passives. I know she's got the fourth Night Soul, you know, normal blessing one. We won't talk about that, but the other three look pretty good. Yeah, so looking at her first Ascension 1 passive, it states that when a nearby party member triggers a Night Soul burst, Mavuika's attack increases by 35% for 10 seconds. That's really good. Obviously, we know she's a damage dealer. She scales on attack, so that's pretty straightforward, just getting a 
direct damage increase. And remember, guys, that Night Soul Burst can be triggered by anyone. If Mavuika is in the team, just being a Natlin character, even if your other three characters are not from Natlin, they're still triggering a Night Soul Burst just because you have a Natlin character in the team. Now, with only one Natlin character in the team, that is just like an 18 second cooldown on when you can do the Night Soul Burst, I believe. So there will be, I guess, an eight second cooldown, but if you're triggering this right before going into Mavuika's damage, you're getting that attack increase, shouldn't be an issue. So pretty good. But looking at the Ascension 2, this states that after using her Elemental Burst, every point of Fighting Spirit present when it is used increases the damage that the current active character deals by 0.25%. The maximum increase obtainable this way is 50%, and this effect lasts for 20 seconds. The increase will decay over 20 seconds until it reaches zero. So this seems very good. This is kind of a, you know, supportive, I guess, passive, but the cool thing is that you can still use it for herself. She's gonna be giving herself more damage through this because it's just the current active character. But I guess because of the way this might work, and of course, once again, subject to change just because this is version one, but based on the way this is worded, it would be interesting to see how you actually can use Mavuika as a support and maybe not use the hold version of the skill. We did kind of talk about that earlier on, but there is a tap version of the skill that just kind of does some pyro damage from off field and kind of creates a ring around your character. There might be some things you can do. I know you mentioned Ayato earlier. That could be a thing you could do. So they, while they have made Mavuika a selfish type character to really ramp up her own damage and have a lot of cool synergies with Natlin teams and even non-Natlin teams, They've even made a way where you could still probably use her as just a support or off-field character. Once again, reminding me of Raiden, because Raiden's very much the same way. She prefers to be used as a DPS, but she does have some supportive capability. She gives back the energy. Her skill is off-field with no downtime for electro application. This is a hyper boom thing you can do. So Mavuika kind of feels like that, but the pyro version. So I really like this overall. The coherency of the kit, even in the version one, seems very well, coherent and very good. Like, I'm already pretty excited about this character. I know you are too, Vixen, if not more than me. So looking very good. And then real quickly, looking at her uh, life talent is what it's called, is the party's Night Soul Transmission cooldown is decreased by 20%. So just a nice little buff to uh, maybe your other Natlin characters if you're doing exploration, like Kanish or something, maybe Chaska. So it, it'll use up the Phlogiston a little bit less. Yeah, the biggest thing, I, I thought this was going to be a little bit stronger than it was, uh, but just keep in mind, like you said, I do want to bring attention to it, it is just the mm. phlogiston uh, that you are helping. It is not the Night Soul points itself. So when you are in the Abyss or you are outside of Natlan, this will not be used. You, it doesn't really help you because it is only during the transmission, which when you're in an area, if the other passive states, when you're in an area with phlogiston mechanics within Natlan, Night Soul Transmission, Mawika, or the character will then be used. So this does not help any party member if you're outside of Natlin. That does include the Abyss as well. But yeah, I think there's a lot to just, in general, a lot of interesting things, like we kind of talked about. We've seen some kind of differing ideas between some things of what her kit's going to do. This is a great kind of first kit, actually, like a very exciting first kit. There's a lot to talk mm -hmm. about. There's a lot going on. I think we went over everything we wanted sure. to, but I think, I mean, I could talk about this all day, to be honest with you, Rift, because there's so many ways, like <laughs> yeah. the off-field yeah. capabilities, like you were talking about, to be used with other characters. Uh, and looking at a future character, we'll make a video about uh, Sitlali. I want to kind of see what she can do in this team. Uh, how, you know, mm -hmm. even though she has low application, it seems like that off-field skill with Mawika, I'm wondering how she can be possibly used in another team somehow. Uh, how she's going to work with other Natlan characters. So there's a lot of cool, interesting stuff that I, I'm, I'm definitely happy and ready and excited for over the coming weeks uh, as the future versions will kind of fix or, you know, smooth the kit out a little bit more until we get upon release. Well, that's everything we've kind of got to really talk about, Mawika. If you guys have any other thoughts, ideas about this first version of the kit, keep in mind there's a lot to subject to change because there's going to be weeks and weeks over the next little while that there's going to be changes. So let us know what you guys think of the kit, the first kit right now, maybe what you're hoping for some changes here and there. Let us know down in the comments. If you guys liked the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Check out our Discord as well. Thank you guys for watching the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.